if you don't think the Brewers are the best team in the division, I don't know what to tell you. They keep passing test after test after test. I don't know who's going to catch them. We'll get to that coming up next on this edition of Lockdown Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, how sweet it is, as the late, great Jackie Gleason would say. How sweet it is. The Brewers win another series. They've taken nine straight series at home. That's amazing. They beat the Cubs again. Not surprising. They're to 50 wins for the first time in 10 years before July 1st. They get the 50 wins. And they just... They continue to shatter all doubt. I mean, they're the best team in this division. They're going to finish over the 500 mark. Anybody who bet 76 and a half over, like yours truly, we are going to cash that ticket. I mean, there's no jinx in that. There's no jinx in that. And the Milwaukee Brewers, man, man, are they amazing. Really, they are. I mean, you look at it. And, I mean, winning two or three for the Cubs this weekend – this was the Cubs' last chance, and the Brewers just go out there, stumbled a little bit on Saturday. They made one of their players blow up, Justin Steele. They got the Cubs all off kilter, and the Brewers come right back on Sunday and get the job done. I mean, these just guys just continue to roll, continue to bounce back, just continue to play, be solid in all direction. And I know we all think at one time, at one point or another, that – the Brewers are going to stumble, and this is not a reality, that this is some sort of dream. But I'm here. I, I mean, they, they've proven enough to me. This is not just a great start. This is a, a, a real good baseball team. I'm not going to call them a great baseball team, but they're a real good baseball team. They're fun to watch. Eight, five grand slams in the last eight games. That's phenomenal. Five grand slams in the last eight games a team that just sometimes struggles to get out of its way. But we know if those bats can get going behind that pitching, Brewers are something special. They are. I mean, how about that? First time in 10 years that they're to 50 wins by July 1st. That says something. Uh, taking the nine straight series. I mean, it sounded like there were a heck of a lot of Cub fans out there this weekend. Heck of a lot of Cub fans. Every time I felt like the Cubs did something, I don't know, maybe it was my TV, but it sure feels like that volume was cranked up on the mics uh, at AmFam Field, on the crowd mics. Anytime the Cubs did something. Were there that many Cub fans out there? I don't know. I was out there Sunday. I didn't see that. I, I, I didn't notice any more than normal. But to me, I thought this was, I said this last week, this series for the Cubs was a last chance to dance. This was their last hope. I'm, I'm now eliminating the Chicago Cubs. Chicago Cubs... You've been eliminated from the NL Central Division race, in my opinion. Cincinnati Reds, you are eliminated from the division race. Yeah, you you might get in as a wild card. Both of you you all are still fighting for the wild card. But as far as the division, Cubs 11 and a half, uh, 39 and 46. The Cubs are embarrassing. The Cubs are flat out embarrassing. What Justin Steele had to do to his team in the locker room, uh, in the dugout, coming into the dugout, I don't remember anybody having to do that with Craig Council managing with Milwaukee. So he's having an awful lot of problems with the Cubs right now. Uh, right now, he ought to be embarrassed. He ought to be embarrassed that his team is playing so poorly and that he needed one of his pitchers to come in the dugout and try to motivate his team. They have been, that's been a long time coming for them. 39-46 they are. But that's, I'm just telling you, this isn't a Cubs podcast. This is a Brewers podcast, but we've followed the Cubs closely. The Cubs have been eliminated. And our guy, Craig Council, uh, what a horrible job he's doing this year. I don't know. I look at 39 and 46, and I, I see, I, I don't know what, whether it's a GM or whatever. I'm not closely following these guys. But to me, the eye test is they, they stink. The Cubs are just rotten, 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 rotten. Uh, mistakes, starting pitching, you name it. The Cubs are bad. Uh, the Reds, the Reds aren't catching the Brewers. I, I'm bad. I apologize, everybody here on Lockdown Brewers. I said the Reds were going to win this division. 
God, was I stupid. I was bought in. I thought that they, you know, made some upgrades in the starting rotation. I thought getting Candelario has not been bad with them. I, I thought that this, you know, they were going to be uh, Elliot Dela Cruz. He still strikes out a heck of a lot, even though he's stealing bases. But the, the Reds aren't winning this division. Reds aren't division. The Pirates, give me a break. The Pirates, go nine and a half out. Yeah, you know, the Pirates might be might as well be twenty out. They're not winning this. This is coming down to the Cubs and St. Louis. The Brewers haven't put the Cardinals away just yet. The Cardinals are hanging around. They won again on Sunday. It's a two man. This is a two team race, in my opinion, right now. As of right now, wasn't feeling this way a couple of weeks ago, but the Brewers have proven to me that uh, and what they're doing. Getting the 50 wins this point, 50 and 34. It looks so beautiful to look at in the standings. I'm telling you, I get up in every morning, I look at the standings, and it's great to see that. It's great to see them with the con- uh, uh, the cushion they got. So I'm I'm just saying, I think it's St. Louis and Milwaukee right now. Um, the Reds and um, the Cubs, you can fight for that stupid wild card berth, okay, uh, but. The Brewers really need to get that second seed. They're playing Los Angeles this week. The Dodgers, they got to really catch them. Ain't catching Philly. But I think there's a chance of catching the Dodgers for that second seed. It's not going to be easy, but they need to get to that second seed and avoid that wild card round. But um, the <laughs> the Pirates, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if the Pirates can. The Pirates are ahead of the Reds and, and the Cubs in the division, but the Reds, the Pirates aren't going anywhere. Uh, they're not going anywhere. 42,600 at the ball ballpark. And yeah, the Brewers win Friday night, lose on Saturday. They have uh, the unfortunate escalator accident uh, at AmFam Field. 11 injuries, horrible thing to happen. Just want to touch on that. I hope everybody was involved in that. Um, you know, you're going to be okay. It sounds like no life-threatening injuries, but man, I was I was sorry to see that. You know, I love I love going to the ballpark. I love being at AmFam Field, and I don't want to see anybody getting hurt and uh, on an escalator and people saying, "Well, they're not going to ride the escalator anymore." And I I get that. I totally get that. But I was just I was just so sorry to see that um, come down after the game yesterday. I was not at the game on Saturday. But to see that, that was, uh, you know, again, fortunately, non-life-threatening injuries. But there was someone who broke a femur, and that's that's not that's never good. You know, that's a leg uh, cast on your entire leg that that person is looking forward. So whether a Cub fan or a Brewer fan, I, I just I felt bad for the eleven injuries that uh, kind of you know put a damper on things over the weekend. You know, the Brewers did take two or three, but that was I was sorry to see that. Um, Bryce Terang is the real deal. Bryce Terang, I think we've agreed he's the real deal. Should we extend that guy? Is that too soon to say that? We'll get to that coming up next. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Forgot to tell you this episode is brought to you by brought to you by Tax Network USA. Tax Network USA. Uh, did you know it's never too late to resolve your tax records? Uh, issues with the IRS. Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt now. Get the help from the taxes, the licensed tax professionals. Call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. That's you, the folks at Tax Network USA bringing you this show. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Good to have you along here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Price Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app, over 5 million active members. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on, on stats. Anywhere from two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You could turn 10 bucks into a thousand just like that. Get in on all the daily action with your friends and become part of Prize Picks community today. Players and stat types that you are selecting and you are wanting, they're all there, all the major ones. Maybe you think Yelich over and under on an amount of hits or maybe on home runs. He had a big two run blast on Sunday afternoon, but download. 
the Price Picks app today. Use the promo code Locked On MLB. That first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's Locked On MLB Price Picks uh, for a deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Packs. Also, we're talking about Tax Network USA here on Locked On Brewers. I'm giving you all the Brewers news, keeping you posted. But hey, that's year round, and you know what's also year round collection season. That's because tax season is over. That doesn't mean that the IRS isn't going to come after you for those unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your taxes, levy your bank account, seize your property. You've heard that before. Don't let the IRS target you. Get the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA. Go to bed for you. 14 years of experience, A-plus rating in Better Business Bureau. Tax Network USA has saved their clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Let them go to work for you. Whether you owe taxes, you got complicated tax matters uh, requiring tax planning, or you finally hit that parlay and you got that form and you got to know how to file it, 1-800-549-1000, tnusa.com slash locked on. Hey, make sure to mention locked on at checkout. You'll receive a $250 discount off their services. You see it if you're watching me on YouTube. Visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Call 1 800 549 1000. That's Tax Network USA. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. You get us on Google, Spotify, Apple, on all the major downloads. Wherever you download your podcast, we are there. We're the number one Brewers podcast on the internet. And I, I just noticed in the last two weeks, man, we have just skyrocketed as far as our, our membership, our subscriptions. It's all free. It's all free. Hit us up again wherever you download your podcast. There's so many platforms out there. We are there. Hit us up on YouTube as well. Our growing YouTube page. You get 30 minutes just like the audio downloads, you get us the same thing, only the video version, a half-hour TV show nightly. Uh, go to YouTube, search Locked On Brewers, Locked On Brewers, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. That alerts you every time we drop an episode. Please follow me on Twitter. Love your comments. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Did not love the comments I was getting from Cubs fans. It came at them a little bit, you know, just tagging them a little bit, and they're coming at me, and they're just saying, well, enjoy your division titles. Well, that's more I can say about the way things are going for the Chicago Cubs, the way they're shuffling in managers these days. Um, but we're going to give you some good news regarding Garrett Mitchell coming up here in a little bit. He's going to be joining the Brewers. We'll talk about that coming up in our next segment. And also, this show is brought to you by the good folks at Tax Network USA and tomorrow night's Brewers game, 740 start. You get it on Sirius XM, the SXM app. Search Brewers. You'll get all 162. Of the home team call right there on Sirius XM on the app. And tomorrow night's game, Monday's game, depending on when you're downloading this episode, 740 with that first pitch. All right. Let's uh, get the Bryce Terang. You know, if I would have told you before the season, yeah, the Brewers need to <laughs> the Brewers need to pay up on Bryce Terang. They extend extend his contract and you know, go right, go right now and extend that contract. I would, uh, you would have told me I was a fool, but it's a reality. Bryce Terang is one of the most important part, part parts of this team. And I didn't need this series to tell me he's at two grand slams in the last eight games. I didn't need that to tell me uh, that Bryce Terang, the guy is slick fielding at second baseman. He's one of the best second baseman defensively the Brewers have ever had. The Brewers haven't had many second basemen like that. Save Jim Gantner. Some of you all out there have never seen Jim Gantner play, but I'm telling you, the guy was amazing at second base. Stealing base hits, going out to short right field, and the way Gumby was, he was amazing. The man from Eden, yes. Maybe the greatest defensive second baseman of in Brewer history. But Bryce Terang is right there. Bryce Terang is right there. So not only did he always bring the A++ glove, but Terang is also hitting the ball. All right, he's driving and runs. He's shortened up his swing. He had bet at 218 last year, but Terang is so good. You look at the metrics, he, he's right there. He is the real deal. And Murphy said this during spring training. He said, Bryce Terang isn't as good as he's going to be. Showing a lot of faith, and I don't know if that's Murphy 
and just once again throwing his weight in back of his of his team, which he likes to do, which is fine by me. But Morang, uh, but Murphy said Terang has got a heck of an upside to him, and I think we're seeing it right now from the leadoff spot. Look at him in that leadoff spot, stealing bases. I didn't even, I didn't get get to that. How efficient he is and how smart he is. He's got a high baseball Q, IQ, as most of these guys in the Brewers do. He gets on base. He hits at the top of the order. He steals base, and he's amazing at the top of the order. I've seen enough of Bryce Terang that. You know, if they want to buy him out of some arbitration and extend him beyond that, that guy is my second baseman for the foreseeable future. I'm going to call it right now. Bryce Terang, let's give that guy a long-term contract extension. All right? I'm not willing to go there with a couple of the pitchers. Like, you know, I'm not going there with Tobias Myers just yet. Okay, long-term him and buy him out of, uh, you know, some of these arbitration years. But I am going there with Bryce Terang. Terang, that guy can lead off for my team for the foreseeable future. Nothing has told me at all where I've second-guessed anything about this guy. I don't think he'd be this good, but I've seen enough. He is this good. Bryce Terang, terrific at the leadoff spot. I want Bryce Terang um, at the top of the order for me for the foreseeable future. No doubt about that. A couple of injuries we got to talk about. Garrett Mitchell coming back to the Rockies. Murphy has already said Tyler Black is being optioned down. No surprise there. I was thinking maybe, like last week, I was thinking, you know, somebody asked me on one of the shows I was on, would it be Monasterio? But he's too valuable. Monasterio is too valuable around the infield as a utility guy. You can play him in the outfield, too, if you need him. You can play him anywhere. But catcher, I would say. But he's he's a... um, he could use him in a bunch of different spots. He had the game-winning base hit last week, uh, last Wednesday. But Monasterio would not go down. Um, it's it's Tyler Black. But Garrett Mitchell coming back for the Colorado series. I feel like Garrett Mitchell has been on the longest rehab assignment in the history of sports. I feel like he's been rehabbing like since April. He broke his finger uh, earlier in spring training, um, but he's ready to go. It's been a long rehab assignment, few setbacks, but Garrett Mitchell has shaken off the rust, and he is ready to go. Jared Koenig going on the injured list. My God. One, I mean, add this to the pile of injuries that the Brewers have just had to absorb. You know, they get some guy on a roll, some pitcher on a roll, you know, throw, throwing great, throwing great. And what happens? Like a, a Robert Gasser. They come up with an injury. Now, right now, they're saying forearm tendonitis. And, God, when I hear that forearm ish- injury, I'm thinking right away, the worst. I do. And it happened with Gasser. Uh, so far, they're saying forearm tendonitis. So we'll see where that goes. He's a valuable part of this bullpen. Valuable part of this bullpen, as you all know. 15-day injury list. Let's hope this kicks it out. And uh, he's back ready to go. But Jared Canning, just another one of these guys who's huge for this team. Un- unsung hero. Didn't expect a lot out of him. You know, I thought going into the sa- into the season, my guys coming out of the bullpen, the, the guys who I was really looking forward to, in addition to Williams before he got hurt. But as far as setup guys, I looked at Uribe, who's injured and did not have a very good before that was not very good. And Piamps, who's going through a heck of a slide right now. Piamps is struggling. Um, gave the two-run home run on Saturday, and I put out a tweet. I'm beginning to lose my faith in Piamps. I hate saying that because I love the guy last year. But, man, in the last several weeks, I don't know, Piamps, maybe he needs a trip down to the minor leagues, but he is struggling. But Jared Canning, need him back. Hope this is a short stay. Again, let's kick out the tendonitis, work him back, and get him ready for post-All-Star break. Uh, But Jared Koenig, uh, that was sad to see that news uh, over the weekend. When we return, who's going to be the pitcher of the month? Who is going to be the pitcher of the month in Major League Baseball? I'll tell you who that one's going to be. That's an easy one. And... 
We'll look ahead to this Colorado LA Dodger road trip for the Milwaukee Brewers. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day, FanDuel. You know, I love sports, but I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. You all know me if you've knew me, if you know me and you've listened to Chuck and Winkler in the morning over the years. You know, we like to bet on games. I like to bet on games. There's no secret about that. And I, by the way, I told a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine was driving to uh, the ballpark today and she called me up to Freems. I am going on the Cubs. And I said, don't do that. I added, I no, don't do that. I, the Cubs are taking two or three in the series. This, this is a desperation for them. I said, don't do that. Don't do that. So the Cubs take a one, nothing lead. He texts me, man, I can get the Cubs at even money right now on the live line. I said, don't do that. And what do you know what? The Bucks, or the, the Brewers put up a seven-run inning. Terang hits the grand slam. Yelich gives them the lead. And I texted him back. I said, I told you, do not bet against the Milwaukee Brewers. If you go to FanDuel, do not bet against the Milwaukee Brewers. You, this series against the Dodgers next weekend, don't bet uh, against the Milwaukee Brewers. FanDuel, hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start making the most of your summer. But, hey, man, if you meet a bonus or a boost, don't waste it going on the opponent of the Brewers. Hey, the Brewers, I have to think, through 50, what, 81 games of the season so far, they have to be the number one team in Major League Baseball to bet on so far. They've probably made the most money for anybody. I, you got to believe. Winning nine straight series at home, are you kidding me? And their numbers are rather low. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League B- Baseball. Hey, get on all the action. Go to FanDuel.com and uh, check out all customers with a boost or bonus. They're hooking all customers up that right now at FanDuel. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. <clears throat> All right, down the home stretch we come. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Sirius XM coming up on Monday night. Brewers late nights again. Yeah, 740 is not so bad. Or 738. The Brewers used to have weeknight home games at 738 back in the 70s and 80s. I think back in the 70s they had like some 8 o'clock starts as well. But 740, Sirius XM, the SXM app, search Brewers. You're going to go 162 of Brewers baseball. All right. I was telling you who's going to win the June pitcher of the month uh, in the National League. It's going to be going to be Tobias Myers. Got off that little rocky start on Saturday, but bounced back. Quality start, six innings, three runs. Kept this team in the ball game. Piams gave that two-run blast in the eighth uh, to Hap, uh, which, um, you know, Myers didn't get a win or loss. That one at the Myers, the, the, the Piams. But Myers, 4-0 in the month of June, uh, he's great. Show me a better pitcher in baseball ahead of uh, Myers. Myers will get the June Pitcher of the Month in the National League. We'll be talking about him coming up. I'm not telling you any insight, but I'd be stunned if Tobias Myers, who wasn't even a 40-man roster, isn't named the June Pitcher of the Month. Those awards come and go. Not a big deal to me, but it'd be kind of cool to see him get that. Um, Colorado, uh, the Rockies are throwing Austin Gumber uh, to the hill. Uh, a one in five record, a 4.63 earned run average. Uh, I'll say this uh, don't take them lightly. These are the kind of guys that give the Brewers, you all know that. These are the kind of guys who give the Brewers some problems. So, Austin Gomber, I don't want to be sitting here tomorrow night talking about you going six strong against the Brewers. Hopefully, the Brewers uh, in that era in Colorado can attack him. Bryce Wilson uh, listed as the starter. Uh, I got a feeling they might use a starter in this game, you know, an opener, I should say. And then, you know, they did it last time. Uh, I think it was Milner that pitched last week. And then Bryce Wilson came on and pitched six strong. Uh, Bryce Wilson's going to be pitching the majority of the innings. Brewers are about a 160 favorite going into this game. And then the Dodgers coming up this weekend. Uh, the Dodgers coming up more late nights against Los Angeles. Hey, but you know what? It's 4th of July week. You know, vacation week in the great state of Wisconsin. You're watching me there. You know, you're all going to be up at your cabins or whatever or getting away for a few days and all that, and it's late-night Brewer baseball. That's okay for me. It's okay for you. Hopefully you have off on Thursday and Friday. 
and we'll all enjoy some late night Brewer baseball. Brewers with Colorado and then Los Angeles. I think of the Rockies, and the Rockies are just terrible. They are. But, you know, this is the kind of team that's going to give the Brewers some problems last, was it last year? Yeah, last year the Brewers, I believe, got swept in Colorado. Yeah, they got swept in May in Colorado. Yeah, and and they weren't very good last year, but they're even worse this year. They did beat the White Sox, another bad team. Yeah, the Rockies and White Sox played in the series at Comiskey this weekend, or White Sox Park, or whatever they call it, guaranteed rate or whatever. Um, and but Colorado won five to four on Sunday, but they're not very good. But can't take anybody lightly. You all know that. Hey, that's going to do it for the show. Google, Spotify, Apple, run all the major downloads. Wherever you download your podcast, we are there. The number one brewer podcast on the network because uh, on the internet because you great brewer fans, please hit me up on YouTube. Search Locked On Brewers on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. And by all means, man, Twitter, I love following. You're, you're seeing what you guys have to say on Twitter. Even you Cub fans, hey, man, don't blame me. Don't blame me for the situation. Don't blame Brewer fans. Don't take it out on us. We got Pat Murphy leading this ship, and things are going good. It's a two-man race. It's a two-team race right now in the NL Central, the Brewers and the St. Louis Cardinals. Everybody else is playing for wild card. The Pittsburgh Pirates, don't worry about them at all in the wild card chase. Brewers won't have to about worry looking at the wild card standing. Brewer fans don't have to look at the wild card standings because – this is the division to win for the Milwaukee Brewers. And now I'm telling you, they got to do some damage by catching the Dodgers and get that second seed in the NL Central. Follow me on Twitter, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. That's going to do it for Lockdown Brewers. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, we are your team every day. Have yourself a great Monday, everybody.